Hey everyone. The latest episode of my podcast, Rationally Speaking, is about what might be my favorite paradox ever. It's called Newcomb's Problem, and here's how it goes. So imagine that you're at some eccentric carnival, and one of the tents is operated by a brilliant mad scientist. So you go in this tent and uh, walk up to a table behind which is standing the scientist, and she points at the table, and you see that there are two boxes sitting on the table. One of them is clear, and inside the box is a thousand dollars. The other box is opaque, and the scientist tells you, the opaque box contains either a million dollars, or it's entirely empty. Now, your choice, she tells you, is you can either take only the opaque box, or you can take both boxes. The choice is up to you. However, she says, there's a catch. As you were walking through my tent, you walked past my highly technologically advanced brain scanning machine, which scanned your brain, produced a detailed picture of your psychology, and was able to predict with near certainty whether you would in this situation take both boxes or only the opaque box. And if my uh, technology produced or predicted that you would take only the opaque box, then I put a million dollars in it. If, on the other hand, my technology predicted you would take both boxes, then I put nothing in the opaque box. Also, she adds, I've done this many, many times before, and I've always been right. So everyone in your position who takes both boxes ends up with only the thousand dollars in the clear box. And everyone in your position who takes only the opaque box discovers that it contains a million dollars. So which do you choose? Well, there's a couple ways of approaching Newcomb's problem. One is to say, well, you know, I sure hope that opaque box has a million dollars in it, but whether it does or not, that's fixed now. The box is already on the table. There's nothing I can do to change that. So I might as well take both boxes. Either way, regardless of which state of the world I'm in, the one in which the box has a million dollars or the one in which it's empty, either way, I might as well take that thousand dollars in the clear box because otherwise it's just money on the table. The other way of looking at it is to say, well, you know, everyone in my position who takes both boxes ends up with only a thousand dollars. Everyone in my position who takes just the opaque box ends up with a million dollars. Which group do I want to be in? And these two ways of approaching Newcomb's problem point at two different kinds of decision theory, two different ways of defining what is a rational way to behave. So the former way of thinking is in line with what's called causal decision theory. And causal decision theory says the rational way to behave is to condition on the state of the world, condition on the things uh, that you can't control in your choice, and then ask, what action can I take given the state of the world that will produce, that will cause the best expected outcome for me? So causal decision theory says, take both boxes. On the other hand, evidential decision theory is a different form of decision theory that says the rational thing to do is to behave in such a way that your action is the strongest possible evidence that you will end up in a good, uh, in, in the best outcome. In other words, which action would, if you found out that you had taken that action, make you feel happy and relieved instead of disappointed? Usually causal and evidential decision theory uh, point to the same action right? Usually in the world, the action that causes the best expected outcome, conditioning on the state of the world, is the outcome that you would be relieved to hear that you had taken. Newcomb's problem and related problems, which are called Newcomb-like problems, are a sort of special case in which causal and evidential decision theory give you different prescriptions. I should note that one common objection to Newcomb's problem is to say, well, this problem is invalid because there's no such thing as a perfect predictor. You know, yeah, you can stipulate in the thought experiment she never gets it wrong, but uh, in real life, there's no way to, to reliably predict with certainty what someone will do before they decide. I don't think this objection holds water. Uh, what's interesting about Newcomb's problem is that you don't actually need the predictor to be 100% accurate. She can be pretty accurate, maybe 75 or 80% accurate, and still the paradox holds. Um, and I don't think it's that unrealistic to imagine uh, either brain scanning technology and or highly advanced psychological um, prediction algorithms using people's uh, body language or past history that could give you 75 or 80% uh, hit rate in predicting what someone would do in a, a situation like this. So the uh, 
unrealism objection doesn't really work, I think. Another kind of response to Newcomb's problem is to say, well, you know, the rational thing to do is to take both boxes. But it just happens that in this case, the problem has been set up so that I get punished for doing the rational thing. And similarly, you could imagine a mad scientist who says, hey, I'll give you a million dollars if you can make yourself believe that the sky is red. As a rational person, I can't make myself believe that, so I'm out a million dollars, um, and that's too bad, but uh, that's what happens when you design problems such that rationality is punished. And I, I have some sympathy for this way of thinking, but at the same time, ideally, uh, we would want a normative rationality, a sort of ideal prescription for behaving to produce the best outcomes. We would want that to not leave you systematically, predictably worse off um, in a bunch of situations. So Kenny Iswaran, who is the philosopher and decision theorist who uh, was featured on the show, what he says is that, well, Newcomb's problem reveals, and, and Newcomb-like problems reveal that when we're trying to define what we mean by rational behavior, we really need to break it down into different levels um, and talk separately about rational character or a rational disposition and a rational act in a particular circumstance. So in Newcomb's problem, rational character would be that which would uh, lead you to always take only the one box because that's the character that leads to being you know, best off. But once you're already in the room with the two boxes in front of you, the rational act is to take both boxes. And you know, we might hope uh, in, in trying to define a coherent notion of rationality that the rational character and the rational acts would always line up. But in fact, he says they don't. Um, and this, this might just be what he calls the deep tragedy at the heart of rationality. There's a bunch of other Newcomb-like problems, many of which we talk about in the podcast, and I encourage you to check it out at rationallyspeakingpodcast.org. It's episode 140. Um, but I'll leave you with one more Newcomb-like problem that I think has uh, some interesting overlap with Newcomb's problem. It's called Parfit's Hitchhiker, because it was proposed by the philosopher Derek Parfit. So imagine that you're stranded in the desert without your wallet or phone or anything to eat or drink, and you're going to die if someone doesn't rescue you soon. But fortunately, a car happens to drive by, and the driver pulls up and rolls down his window, and it's uh, an illustrious psychologist who is a renowned expert at reading people's intentions from their facial expressions and tone of voice and body language. And he says to you, hey, I'd be happy to rescue you and drive you back to town on the condition that you can promise that you'll give me $1,000 as compensation once we get to town. Because you don't have your wallet now, so you can't pay him now. Now for you, this is a great deal. You get to live in exchange for $1,000. Um, and you, you would very much like to take this deal. The problem is that you know now that once you get to town, you will have no reason to give him the $1,000. Uh, this is assuming, by the way, that you're, you and the driver are both selfish agents. So you only care about maximizing your own payoff. And so knowing that you won't have reason to give him the $1,000 when you get to town, there's no way for you to truly believe now that you will give him the $1,000. And he, being an expert face and body language reader, can tell that you know you won't have reason to give him the $1,000 once you get to town, and so he's not willing to rescue you, and you end up uh, much worse off than you would have. The parallels here to Newcomb's problem are, you know, the rational character is that which will always give the $1,000, because having that character leads to you getting rescued, but once you're in town, the rational act is to not give the $1,000, again, assuming you're a selfish agent. And this might just be one more case of what Kenny calls the deep tragedy of rationality in which rational character and rational acts um, diverge. I encourage you to check out the podcast for more discussion of Newcomb-like problems and also other decision theories that have tried to go beyond causal and evidential decision theory in, in an attempt to resolve paradoxes like that of Newcomb's problem or Parfit's Hitchhiker. <laughs>